like waking up to the road. I do. We're on our way home. We're about six hours away without stops. We're still in Saskatchewan. We should be in Manitoba in a few hours. Shouldn't be that long. And then we're going home. We're taking this load to the yard. Being delivered on Monday, I guess by someone else. I don't know. My truck has got to go in and get safety on Monday. Yeah. Here goes another day, another shot. This fine town in front of you would be Yorkton, Saskatchewan. If I can clean this window up a little bit for you here. Come on now. Why do my wipers always suck every time? There you go, there you go. Yorkton, Saskatchewan. Very nice. I've never actually come through this way. I had to go on a detour because they were uh, fixing the main truck route. Look at that, there's like forks and spoons and knives. Look at this at the intersection here. Are they going to have it here too? No, they don't have it here. Okay. Well, go back if you didn't see it. They had like forks and spoons and knives in the crosswalk. Strange. Superstore. Real Canadian Superstore. It's like Canada's version of Walmart. But no offense, Canada Walmart's still a little better. Actually, you know, they're about at par. I shouldn't say that they're better. I just usually go to Walmart because I'm in the States more than Canada. No, I'm Canadian. Very nice. <laughs> but we're not going to Superstore. No, oh, I'm a truck driver. I just have to park a mile away to get to Timmy's. So why would they put truck parking close to Timmy's? Now, that would just make sense. They wouldn't want to do that. The lineup for drive through around Tim's goes all the way around the block. I don't know how anyone can live without Tim's. That's a good read. That's a good question right there. When I was in Seattle, it's totally different. Everything's about Starbucks. Starbucks. Everyone's obsessed and in love with Starbucks. Them and their bitter coffee. <laughs> I am a little pro Tim Hortons. But uh, apparently that's where Starbucks first started. That's why it's so big there. So that makes sense. That makes sense. It's not that I don't like Starbucks. I just, if I have a choice, I'm gonna go with Tim Hortons. I'm just saying. I only had to walk half a mile to get it to. It wasn't that bad. And here she waits for me. I think she missed me already. I missed her already. And I missed her nice boots. Very nice boots indeed. All right, it's time to carry on. Carry on, carry on. I think I locked the doors, right? We're in Canada, we don't need to lock the doors. I lock the doors. Should always lock the doors everywhere. And then remember which pocket you put the keys in. I always forget. I check every pocket except the one that they're actually in. Check that one last thing I do. Okay. Oh, hey Diesel. Hey Diesel. Oh man, I also have both my phones in the cup holders here. Oh, and a Walmart card. I gotta use that yet. Okay. Here we go. That was the adventure for the day. Very exciting, very exciting. I can see you yawning from here. Oh, come on. They gave me the... Come on, they gave me the frosted cinnamon roll with the least icing. It's supposed to be all covered in icing. Hashtag disappointed, Diesel. Show them your disappointed face. Now you gotta put your tail down, man. Don't wag your tail, it doesn't look... You're ruining it, man. Doing it wrong. <laughs> Hashtag disappointed. I want more icing. So you remember that construction in Saskatchewan yesterday? See, this is 
how we do it in Manitoba. <laughs> I can't talk for all parts of Manitoba. Remember like a couple weeks ago, Manitoba had the whole road gravel too, like the Trans Canada, so apparently we all have our days when we just uh, fix the roads in interesting ways. I don't know what I'm trying to say. All I'm saying is here, you know how like they left the pavement on here? I don't feel like I'm gonna wreck my truck going through their construction zone. I, I sort of like that, I appreciate that. I didn't like the feeling that construction zone gave me yesterday. It made me feel like I was gonna wreck my truck or like get a nail in my tire going th through their construction. I mean, had I known that, maybe I wouldn't have taken that route, you know? But there's no warnings about that until you get there and then you're there. Oh, we just got to uh, Flying J Winnipeg here and I'm looking for my fancy Flying J card. Remember I explained how to, uh, or how those point systems worked at Husky and how I was using Husky points yesterday? Well, today we're using pilot points because I'm a professional driver. Professional, what does that mean exactly? Is it because it's my profession? that they call me a professional, or is that just because I really know what I'm doing, that I'm a professional? Or because I've been trained to be a professional? But if that's the case, many people have been trained, but they're still not professional. What exactly makes you a professional driver? Let me know in the comment section down below. It's time to get some go-go juice. I'm gonna get some go-go juice. Okay, so how am I gonna do this? I don't know if I can do this left-handed. So first I put my card in, right? All of you are always wondering, how do you fuel up? Show me fueling up. Okay, so here you go. First you put your card in. It's gonna say, remove card. I already removed it, man. I'm faster than you. One moment, please. Always one moment, one moment, one moment. Swipe your loyalty. That is this yellow card that I keep telling you about. Swipe that in there. Pull that out. And then it's gonna ask you about 200 questions. I may be exaggerating a little bit, but it asks way too many questions. Just give me my fuel. It's gonna ask you next product, cancel, tractor fuel, reefer fuel, both. Tractor fuel. Reefer fuel would be if you had a refrigerated trailer. That would be the fuel for the trailer. This asks you if you want DEF, diesel exhaust fluid. No, my truck does not run with DEF. Thank God, only the new ones do. It's to help with emissions so that it doesn't pollute the atmosphere so much. And then it constantly takes forever to do whatever it needs to do. Unit number. You put in your unit number. Okay, I press in. Come on. Okay, then driver ID. This is the secret password you guys can never know. Okay, one moment please. Again, one moment please. One moment please. Do you want a cash advance? No, I'm good. I'm going home. Thanks. Additional products, oil, bottle DEF, additives, cancel, no, yes, no. If I wanted that, I would go inside and buy it myself. I don't know why they need to ask me at the pump. Whatever. Now it says remove nozzle to fuel truck diesel. All right, then you go here. <sighs> Beware of dog, open her up. I know I'm doing it with my bare hands. I should not be doing that. Now I'm getting the inside of my glove dirty. That's a fail, that's a fail. Oh well, open that up. Take this out. Put it in there. Pull this out. And you start it, and there you go. Now there's a satellite pump on the other side. This scared me. Jeez. The satellite pump on the other side uh, pumps fuel into the other tank. In the United States, you can pump both tanks at the same time. In Canada, you can only do one side or the other. I think it's for safety so that there's less chance of spilling happening on the other side while you're watching this pump on this side. Technically, we're supposed to stand right here beside it the entire time. But who does that? Who does that? <laughs> it's a good idea to watch the pump because if it falls out and goes everywhere, you're in trouble and you can't really get away from it because they got cameras around here. I don't know where they are, but they're here and they're watching you. So if you uh, spill anything, They'll, they can find out that it was you. So it's a good idea to watch it, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Let's go around and look at the satellite pump. It's just like the other side without all the fancy uh, gauges and stuff. It's just a pump, right? So open this up here. Take this out. 
And you pull that out. As soon as you pull this out, I don't know if you heard that, the other side stops. So I don't know about you guys, but I usually fuel my passenger side first or the satellite side first. Sometimes the satellite side is on the driver's side, but usually the main pump is on the driver's side, right? And I'll usually fuel up the passenger side or the satellite side first, uh, finish off with that one, and then I know that that one's done, right? And I know that I put it away uh, because you never want to leave the passenger side nozzle in your tank, forget about it and drive away, right? It happens more often than you think. I've seen it happen more than once. I'm sure it's pretty embarrassing for those drivers. So you don't want to be one of those drivers. So I always do the passenger side first, finish it up, hang up the nozzle, and then come and finish the driver's side so that I know everything is done on that side and I don't have to worry about that. That's the way I do it. There's no right or wrong way of doing it. You guys want to see how much fuel I'm going to buy today? We've just started. Final price is 563.948 liters, $704.37. Canuck money. Canadian money. That was just, was it about two thirds of a tank? Something like that. I had about a third left. And now, I'm full of juice and we're ready to go and park it for a few days. This truck's actually getting a safety on Monday. It's uh, getting some work done on the satellite uh, on tomorrow. And we're moving Tuesday and we're settling in Wednesday and then we're leaving Thursday, hopefully. <sighs> One more stressful week, guys. By the time you watch this, it'll all be over already and hopefully my stress levels will be going like, down. I shouldn't say that. My stress levels aren't actually at a alarming peak or anything. It's just, you know, I'd rather this all be over. We are here at the yard, at the yard, and we're just getting all my stuff together. I don't want to put take too much stuff home, because whatever I take home, I'm going to have to move, right? And I don't want to move it twice, so I'm just going to leave it in here. And then I'm going to drive this truck to my new house once I move in there. And then I'm going to empty it all out and do all my laundry there in my new washer and dryer. i got a nice front load washer and dryer there, the, the kind I've always wanted. It comes with the house, so I'm excited to use them. <laughs> That's very manly for me to say. Can't wait to get to my new house so I can do laundry. <laughs> so true, though. So true. I am looking forward to doing laundry there. I'm looking forward to filming the tour for you guys. It's going to be great. So this truck is going into the shop tomorrow for some free work that needs to be done to it. Uh... The employer wants to install a satellite into my truck so they can track me everywhere I am. So they can put their thumb on me and say, hey, giddy up. That was me impersonating them, kicking me in the butt. Get moving. Where are you? And they don't have to like call me and email me constantly. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Not that they do that, but you know, if they wanted to know where I was, that's what, how they would have to do it. Oh, so. Oh, I'm really procrastinating bringing everything into the car. I want to leave most of it in here, like I said, but at the same time, the mechanics are going to come in here tomorrow, and I don't want it to be too messy. I don't mind if it's all messy like this when it's just me in here, me and you guys, because you guys understand the mess. It's an organized mess. I know where everything is, except right now it is actually a mess. It is. I'm trying not to show too much of it to you right now. But I don't want the mechanics to see it like this, because that reflects on me, the driver, right? I know how it feels to get into someone else's truck, into their mess. Totally different than getting into your own truck and your own mess. Just like your room, right? Your room may not be messy to you, but to a stranger who walks in there, it might be disgusting. So, anyways, guys, let's uh, let's go home for the last time. Diesel, this is the last time we come home to this house. The last time we come home to this, the mess won't change. It'll simply just move to the new house. And the new house will be a mess for a while because we've got to unpack and move in. That'll take a few months because I'm never there to do it. But the last time, guys, 
I know this place looks like a disaster zone right now. But you guys remember what it looked like before I started moving, right? I had just gotten my furniture. I just made it look all homey. I had my maps up here. I won't forget that clock. Thank you for whoever made that comment on my video a week ago or so. He says, Trucker Josh, don't forget the clock. <laughs> Good thing you said that because I probably would have just left it there and forgot about it. Oh, that's funny. But I will pack that. I'll probably pack it last because it's nice to know what time it is. Yeah. Everything's moving. Someone asked me, Trucker Josh, how are you moving your fish? Well, I'll move fish like I always move fish. I'll put them in a bucket. And I'll bring them to the new house and I'll take them out of the bucket and put them back in there. Simple as that. Oh, remember this? Wank, <laughs> wank. Little duck call. Uh, I'm so glad I'm going to be getting a new house. It's sort of sad to see this go, but at the same time, I'm glad. I am so glad I'm getting a new house. It's, it's going to be fantastic. Yep, goodbye, house. Goodbye, colorful room. <laughs> you wait till you see the next house. There's two colorful rooms there. I'm gonna have to change one because one was obviously a girl's room. I'll leave that in suspense. You can imagine what the previous owners did to that room. It was a girly girl's room. And there was one that looked like it was a baby boy's room maybe. We'll see. This bed is gonna look majestic and magnificent in the new bedroom, the new master bedroom. It is. Oh, everything's going away. Everything's going away. I'm gonna have such a bigger yard. It's not as big of a yard as I had thought. It's uh, an acre, half an acre, three quarters of an acre, something like that. It's not as, it's not a huge acreage. So I just wanted to, uh, I don't want to disappoint you guys when you see it. You're like, oh, I thought it was a huge acreage. No. It's a country property, it's a big yard, but uh, it's not as big as I had first dreamed, but it's uh, perfect for me, perfect. There's room in the back to build a shop and that's all that matters, right? <sighs> yep, okay guys, so I'm gonna end the vlog here. Thanks for watching today, like always. Hit that like button if you like the video. You can go down below, find some links that you like, click them, see where they take you. Who knows, you might like that too. Okay guys, we'll see you tomorrow, 4 a.m. Central Time, right here on this channel.